Before we start with today's message, I wanted to let you know that your time with God doesn't have to end when this devotion does. Oh, it's Pastor Mike, by the way. <laughs> if you still find yourself wanting more great resources that take you deep into God's Word and deeper into the faith that you want, just visit us at timeofgrace.org. However you learn best, I bet we've got something for you. From our sermons, to our video devotions, to written devotions, to books, to blogs, and, of course, to more podcasts. One more time, just visit timeofgrace.org. I'll see you there. Love your enemies. That has to be one of the hardest things that Jesus ever asked us to do. And we've got a great example of it in the story of David for today. Maybe a little backstory is helpful. So after David defeated Goliath, the giant, um, and won Israel the victory, he entered into Saul's service and he became one of his generals. And, and, And God was with him and he had incredible success. The only problem was King Saul got jealous of his success and actually wanted to kill him. And so David ran away with a small group of people and he would go from place to place hiding and Saul would go chasing after him to try to kill him. Here's my point. Saul and David were not friends. Saul was trying to kill David. That makes Saul David's enemy. Um, And so the the people where where David was hiding, um, the people from the city, it was kind of like your little brother who used to run to mom and tattle on you. Well, they ran and told King Saul where David was hiding. And so Saul took Abner, his general, and 3,000 soldiers to go where David was hiding. A little overkill? Yeah, that's how much Saul hated David, okay? So um, so they camp, they set up camp, and the way it worked is that they would all um, set up the camp, and then Saul would be right in the middle of them. He's the most important person. He'd be the hardest person to get to. Well, David found out where Saul was encamped, and he said, who's going to go with me? And Abishai said, well, I'll go with you. And so they snuck in at night, And this is an amazing miracle in and of itself. They made it all the way to where Saul was and they found Saul fast asleep with a jug of water and a spear stuck in the ground next to his head. Now put yourself in their shoes. What would you do to the guy who had driven you from your home and your family, who had murdered innocent people on your account trying to hunt you down and who would not stop hunting you down until you were dead? Well, let's see, there's there's a spear and there's his head and it's not a moving target because he's fast asleep, chances are you'd be thinking what Abishai was thinking. Let's kill him with the spear. But David says, no, I'm not going to lay a hand on Saul. That's not our business to take vengeance on Saul. That's God's business to do justice. No, just grab that water jug and his spear and let's go. David thought that the spear would make the point. Get it? Okay, that was a terrible joke. But anyway, so David and Saul, or David and Abishai, they go back over to their side and they go up on a hill and they call out to the Israelites, they, or to, the, to Saul's soldiers and, and to Saul himself. And they said, why didn't you protect your king? Where are the water jug and the spear that were next to his head? And David showed Saul the water jug and the spear and Saul realized that David could have killed him, but he didn't. So Saul went home. So I want you to imagine for a moment that you are in a position, think of your worst enemy in your head, and now you're in a position where you see them fast asleep with a spear stuck in the ground next to their head. Figuratively speaking, obviously. Maybe that spear is a chance to gossip about them or um, a, a chance to ruin their reputation or a chance to do something to them to get back at them for what they've done to you or how they feel about you. What would you be thinking? Chances are you'd be thinking what Abishai was thinking. Let's kill him with the spear. But David didn't. He said, I'm not going to lay a hand on Saul. Why? Because Saul deserved it? Absolutely not. It's because his Lord did. Always remember how God treated his enemies, you and me, while we were still sinners, not friends, while we were still sinners. Christ died for us. And you might ask Jesus, why? Why would you do that for your enemies? And his answer would be profoundly simple because they are no longer my enemies when I love them. He calls you friend. And so the next time you see your enemy, put down the spear. And you might object, but they don't deserve it. And you'd be absolutely right, but that's not the point. Your Savior, Jesus, does. And he asks you to love them. So kill them with kindness, not a spear.